Ah, there I am. Uh, yeah. Okay, insipid I am. Inspired I am, whatever. Um, doesn't really matter. <laughs> She's going to make like a 17-part video responding to the uh, my, my gray text. Um, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> yeah, it's a response video, but come on. Uh, it's hardly serious. I mean, it was serious at points, but, you know, it's just this, you know, me and Great Dicks have been going back and forth for years. So, of course, she takes all that context and just ignores it and pretends that it's, uh, you know, one of the greatest, uh, you know, philosophical debates of ever, and she's going to dissect it. So, anyway, that was funny. So, anyway, the, the point is, uh, as I watched her first part video, and I'll, I'll do something with it. <laughs> but, anyway, um, uh... Yeah, so it's all about this subjectivism and this truth thing. You know, we all, because she had a bad experience with the truth, <laughs> yeah, we've all got to be paranoid. Oh, it's just so funny. Uh, but she'll tell us what the truth is. She'll tell us what is subjective and what is objective because some book told her so or something. And, uh, you know, that's supposed to make sense. Uh, she, her argument is... Is I gained no, I gained no meaningful information from uh, the measurement tool that is me as a, as a human being. So when I have a sensitive experience, when I feel something, my I have no logical reason or logical uh, logic doesn't dictate that I extrapolate and I see gross similarity between all these other creatures, these conscious things and their feelings and that there are these there's commonality among all these creatures and it's when something is grossly aberrant we actually have grossly aberrant behavior and we can sit there and qualify that and classify it as lunatic that's actually a word um, uh, yeah because it's completely against what we know to be the truth uh, it's not a good idea to rip your own penis off and eat it so when somebody's doing that, uh, we can say they're broken. We can say they're dysfunctional. And that, um, that dysfunction is an absolute statement. <laughs> okay, it's not a qualitative. Um, it, it's absolute. Um, I mean, it's qualitative, but it's, yeah, that's the whole point. She says anything that has to do with quality can't be judged when it comes to values. And this is just the convenient out for the selfish, hedonistic, ass wipes who want to take no responsibility for their life. They'll just declare all ethics invalid. So they can be serial killers or uh, wife beaters or petty thieves, shoplifters. So I don't know exactly what her crimes are, but I'm sure she must have some <laughs> because it's only criminals who need, to, who need an excuse to be an asshole. And she apparently needs the excuse uh, because it's contrived. It's quite obvious. We know it's absolutely wrong, absolutely universal fact that it is completely insane, lunatic behavior to uh, torture a sentient creature, to inflict unnecessary, brutal, harsh torture on a sentient creature is absolutely, flat out, fucking wrong. No doubt about it. Um, you know, putting Jews in concentration camps starving them to death, gassing them to death, working them to death, whichever one, uh, is absolutely fucking wrong. Especially if you're doing it because you believe they're the devil. Uh, or because you believe they're racially inferior. Or some other nonsense. Uh, you know, are racially a menace. You know, they're genetically a menace. <laughs> uh, complete nonsense. Idiotic. Insane. Lunatic behavior. Because we know it's absolutely illogical. It's irrational. Because we do have a capacity to know from personal experience. We've all had it. We all know there's good feelings. There's bad feelings. Horribly bad feelings. And <clears throat> that's just the truth. We've learned the truth through the measurement tool of our own consciousness. We, in fact, have the only way to acquire real knowledge of the truth of value is because we can feel. That's how we have derived the insight. Nothing else in the universe can't know it. We can know it. The universe can't know it. Because you have to be experiencing it to understand it. But we do understand it 
we understand the mechanism and we can make absolutely certain value statements, objectively true value statements about the fact of qualitative experience. That it's qualitatively better to eat chocolate cake um, in Bermuda than it is to eat dog shit in, I don't know, pick a shitty place, the shittiest place on earth, Fukushima. Yeah, a plate of dog shit on top of Fukushima. Yeah, that's qualitatively absolutely not a good experience by comparison to almost every other experience. Uh, so this is just bullshit. So because somebody says it in a book, right, the non-cultist, uh, you know, is insisting that nobody can make a qualitative statement in absolute terms. And of course it's just bullshit. And like I said, if you're going to argue for such absolute subjectivity, then you're going to run into a huge dilemma, which is saying that you're locking people up because it's popular, not because you have a moral authority or an ethical authority, so you have no authority. If your only authority is a mob rule, that's bullshit. The mob has to actually have an argument. If the mob doesn't have a logical argument and it just has a popular vote, then you have no authority. You have no justification. So it's time to let all the criminals out, legalize rape, legalize wife beating, legalize it all, you stupid bitch. Is that the world you want to live in? You subjectivist lunatic? Um, because everybody can just make up their own rules. My consciousness, I, I declare, my consciousness is twice as good as yours. I know it. The subject of truth, but it's, that's all I need, right? I don't need any better than that. So uh, I just declare it subjectively. I'm worth two or three or five of you, so fuck you. I mean, that's the door you open. So it's nonsense. It's idiotic. It's what it is. And to come from this source, this arrogant, 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 uh, ill-informed, um, sloppy, reckless, you know, fucked hard, sorry, um, it's just so obnoxious. You know, she's barely escaped, uh, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, reform school, and she's writing treatises on uh, criminal justice. I mean, it's just nonsense. Grow up a little. Get a little distance between yourself and your own psychological hang-ups and problems. And then maybe try talking about the truth without seeing your little whatever it is, whatever the Jehovah's did to you. I do find it ironic because I mentioned Jehovah Witnesses in one of my videos because somebody else had commented about her history with them. And she made a big stink. Like, uh, no, I wasn't a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> well, okay, then. I don't know why it's a subject of such importance and relevance to you, then. Uh, but whatever. Who cares? I certainly don't care. But it just would be nice for there to be some sort of consistent fact trail here. So anyway, she makes the accusation, too, that I respond to one of her truth videos. Well, I'll get into that when I respond to her video. Well, I might as well get into it now. Um, yeah, you make a video titled Truth. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, lots of subjects relate to the truth, newsflash. Uh, so if you're claiming the truth, you're claiming there is no truth, then people can legitimately argue that from about four million different perspectives. Uh, so sorry about that, but yeah, that's just kind of bullshit. You're going to say there's no authority for any ethical law? Well, that's kind of silly. Beyond popularity? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's just... That's laughably imbecilic. Slavery was wrong before it was properly recognized as being wrong. That's just the truth. Okay, popularity doesn't change anything about the fucking reality. Uh, so, what else is there to say? Yeah, just idiots, you know. That's all there are on the internet. Well, it's not all. I mean, there's all these smart people. There's smart people and dumb people. That's all. We're going to have to keep arguing with the dumb people. And that's just the way it is. But it's really hard to work from their premises. You know, because really, I can't accept the premise that we gain no knowledge, knowledge, 
uh, through the sentient experience and that we understand that uh, through sentience we do understand that there is this thing called suffering and that it's substantive it's not meaningless it's not it's not just a rock rolling down a hill it's not a grain of sand it's not a glass of water no it's something very different it has a substance to it uh, it's really really uh, you know weighty stuff and uh, really important most human beings would spend preposterously high amounts of money to protect the things they love from suffering and that's a fact yeah that's a fact and that fact indicates this thing has real meaning real hard meaning <laughs> yeah uh, so uh, what else do we have to go with um, yeah, I don't know, there's not much to argue, but yeah, we always come across this subjectivist stuff. It really is sick and disgusting that apparently there's a bunch of old authors of the past who, you know, they had the same problem. You had the rationals who were talking about how, you know, life's pretty much a piece of shit when you look at it. And then you had these nutballs who were saying, uh, yeah, don't worry, be happy, party. And, uh, yeah, fuck whomever you want, because uh, it's natural. <laughs> yeah, we should, we should behave like maggots. I don't know, where, where did they even get that? Why would you want to do that? I mean, I'd rather be a cockroach. It's, it's just a simple fact. I mean, it's an honest statement. If I had my choice to be a cockroach or you, I'd be a cockroach. <laughs> yeah, there's just no doubt about it, uh, because you're such an insult to intelligence. Uh, talking this cripe. <laughs> I mean, shit. Um, you can't figure out the obvious. Suffering sucks. Okay, it just does. Quite absolutely. Quite universally. It's the only value in the universe. And you're ignoring it. You're ignoring the elephant in the room and paying attention uh, to an imaginary speck of glitter. There's nothing else the most important thing in the world. Harm. Preventing harm. <laughs> you know, harm. Sentient harm. Not like harm. Oh, he's got a deformed finger. No. Harm that actually causes discomfort. A, a, a reduction in the quality of life. That is the most important thing in the world. And we can know what the quality is because we have personal experience. We know it would really suck to have your leg eaten off you while you're alive by your dog. That it would really, really fucking suck. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't have to write a fucking, uh, you know, novel and explain how much that would suck. I mean, any asshole can figure out how much that would suck. And there's a qualitative end of the story statement. And then you just compare everything else to that suck. And there's your fucking goddamn value scale. Shit. I mean, you know, how many hamburgers would you give up not to have your leg eaten off while you're alive and sentient and feeling by a dog? I mean, you know, come up with a number, please. I mean, for me, it's about, you know, it's about as many as you can cook. So, yeah, whatever you can cook, I'll give up. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, you know, better question might be how many, how many, how many, of will say millimeters just for fun. How many millimeters would you allow your penis to be shrunk? Now, that's getting tough. Holy shit. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Leg eating off or lose an inch of your penis? Oh, damn. Now that's a tough choice. But that's just how fucking psychotic we are. I'll concede. That's now I'm being a lunatic. <laughs> you know, because I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead, eat my leg off uh, to save just another piece of stupid meat. Uh, but yeah, that's something to explore. That's, a, that's where you get to me anyway. That's where the value equation gets tough. <laughs> yeah, 
Oof, and it's rough. But the point is, it's all trading shit for shit. You know, it's all trading negatives for negatives, for negatives for negatives. You know, spare me hell, give me purgatory. You know, we're all, we're just gambling with blood and guts, bones, tumors, uh, small penises. We're just gambling with crap. All these crap choices. You know, shit or shittier or shittiest. And you people are just going to keep playing this, you know, pink balloon, Ringo Dingo tune. <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> yeah. I got my balloon. You don't got no balloon. <laughs> yeah. You better go out and get you one pretty soon. Do do do. It has to be simpler than that. Porridge, 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 porridge. <laughs> yeah. oh. I have to come up with like the black Teletubby, Darth Teletubby Vader. <laughs> yeah, he eats the other Teletubbies. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, make the movie. Teletubby, the movie. That's what we need. Yeah, be cool. Um, yeah, enough of this shit. Yeah, it could be like the fourth installment of Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, you can combine Hamble Lecter and Teletubbies. That has to be good. Yeah. 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 He does that yeah thing. Yeah. The eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Go next time, I guess. So, there's more silliness on the internet. Horribly discouraging. Oh, retards. Dumb as sticks. And we're expected to talk to them and explain reality. Ugh.